Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So Resident Evil Village has just released on Mac and it is the first game to make use of some of the brand new Metal 3 graphics API features such as Metal FX Upscaling. And this is really exciting because it basically allows you to run a game at a lower resolution and then Metal FX will upscale this to a higher resolution, vastly improving performance of the game with only a small compromise in graphical fidelity. So in this video today, we're gonna to be looking at the performance boosts in Resident Evil Village using Metal FX and we're also going to be talking about why this is the future of Mac gaming. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So to recap, for everyone who doesn't already know, Metal 3 is a brand new graphics API that was announced earlier this year at WWDC. This would be integral to the ports of several games, including No Man's Sky and Resident Evil Village. And one of the most exciting features is called Metal FX Upscaling. And if you're familiar with DLSS or FSR, this is basically Apple's version of the same graphics API. By rendering a game at a lower resolution and then using Metal FX upscaling algorithms in order to scale it up to a higher resolution, you can get some pretty huge performance increases whilst maintaining good graphical fidelity, which is going to allow the game to run on even lower end Macs like the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And this feature is macOS Ventura exclusive. So you can actually run this game using macOS Monterey. However, within the display settings, you'll see that the Metal FX option is grayed out. And you'll definitely want to upgrade to Ventura because Metal FX upscaling is gonna give substantially better performance. When you turn on Metal FX in Resident Evil Village, you have two different options, performance and quality. So on the right hand side, we have Metal FX turned off, we're running about 35 FPS. In the center, we have Metal FX turned on to quality mode and we're getting around a 10 FPS boost and the quality looks very similar. On the left, we have Metal FX performance mode turned on and we're getting around a 20 FPS boost, which is pretty substantial. However, this does come at a cost. If you look closer at the tree branches, you're gonna see very jagged edges. But the win here really is for Metal FX quality mode. To my eye, there is virtually no difference between the metal effects being turned off and then metal effects being turned on to quality mode. If I look closely, I can actually see a little bit of loss of detail around the face between the eyes and the nose where the wrinkles are. But whilst the game is in motion, I can't really tell a difference unless I'm looking really hard for it. Whilst you're actually moving around the game world, you might mistake metal effects quality mode for metal effects being turned off and being rendered at the native resolution. And then again, it really depends on what kind of object that we're looking at. Highly intricate items seem to be rendering great using Metal FX quality mode. And for me, if you're running Resident Evil on a Mac, there's absolutely no reason not to turn on Metal FX quality mode. It basically represents a free 33% boost in FPS and virtually no cost to image quality. Now the same thing can't be said of Metal FX performance mode. And with this turned on, whenever we see tree branches or finer detail like hair, then this is gonna render with very jaggy edges and also artifacts as well. And it looks like performance mode utilizes some kind of interlaced checkerboard rendering in order to reach this higher level of performance, which can often go over 60 FPS in 1080p on the M1 Mac. So if we have Metal FX turned off, we can change the rendering mode from normal to interlaced. However, if we have Metal FX turned on, we cannot choose the rendering mode. We only have the choice of quality or performance. And it looks like the performance mode doesn't perform the same kind of upscaling and actually introduces some artifacts as well. And this is a lot more noticeable on NPC faces where you can see little dotted artifacts on top of the finer detail. And this is quite noticeable when characters are in motion as well. So you can see this kind of shimmering effect on this person's face. So developers who actually wanna use metal effects actually have two different ways of performing the upscaling. There is spatial upscaling and then there is temporal upscaling. So it's not super clear to me exactly which type of upscaling has been used by Resident Evil Village. It could be that the quality and performance mode use different upscaling methods. If you have any theories, then please make sure to leave a comment. So what's cool about Metal FX is the ability for even the lowliest M1 Mac to gain a roughly 33% or 10 FPS boost over non-Metal FX rendering. And if you desperately want even more performance, you can turn on performance mode and gain a roughly 50% increase in frame rate at the cost of some visual quality. So what makes Metal FX so important for the future of Mac gaming is the fact that we can now tailor performance and quality all the way from Apple's most powerful chip, the M1 Ultra, down to the lowliest base M1 chip. And it means that titles that make use of Metal FX in the future, for example, the upcoming game No Man's Sky, are probably gonna work great no matter which Apple Silicon Mac you throw at it. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos like this on my channel, so please check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.